Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the ANOVA test, also known as the analysis of variance, and how to carry out ANOVA tests in Python. Now, in the previous couple lessons, we learned about the t-test for checking whether the means of two different groups differ. The t-test works well when dealing with only two groups, but sometimes we might want to compare more than two groups at the same time. For example, if we wanted to test whether voter age differs based on some categorical variable, say the voter's race, we would have to compare the means within each group of that categorical variable. Now, we could try to carry out a separate t-test for every single pair of groups, but when you conduct many different tests like that, you increase the chances of getting false positives. The analysis of variance, or ANOVA test, is designed for situations like this where you want to compare multiple different group means all at the same time. So we're going to learn about how to do a one-way ANOVA test in Python. In this lesson, we're not going to go into all the detail of how ANOVA works and carry out all the calculations by hand manually before showing the automated Python way of doing it because the ANOVA calculations are a bit more complicated. So we're just going to go straight into showing how to do an ANOVA test using Python packages. So the Python SciPy library has a built-in function that will let us do a one-way ANOVA. So we're going to load it in and show how to do that. So we're going to load NumPy, pandas. We're going to make a plot, so we're loading in matplotlib. And then we have scipy.stats, so we're loading in these libraries. And then we'll start by making some fake data that we can use to show the ANOVA. So we're going to start by generating some fake voter data where we have a numeric variable we're interested in, in this case, the age of the voters. And we also are going to make a categorical variable, in this case, the race of the voters. And then we're going to use an ANOVA to see whether the age, the mean ages, are different across the different categories. And the way we're generating this here, all the ages are generated the same way. So that tells us that they are all from the same distribution, so the means aren't different. So we would hope the ANOVA then will give us a result saying there isn't a significant difference because we know that there isn't going to be based on the way we generate this. And this code below here is just extracting all of the different groups. And then we just pass in a comma separated list of the numeric information for each of the groups that we're comparing. So we're passing in the numeric vector for each one of these groups, their, vo their voting ages. So when we run this, we get a resulting test statistic, in this case 1.77. This is the so-called F statistic. Like with the T test, we had a T statistic that we compared to a T distribution to see if it was significant. With the chi-squared test, we got a chi-squared statistic that we compared to a chi-squared distribution. Well, with the ANOVA, we get what's called an F statistic, and you compare that to the F distribution. Basically, all these statistical tests work in that similar way, where you're generating a statistic that aligns with some distribution, and then you're comparing that statistic to some critical value based on that distribution to see if the result is significant or not. And then the other part of the output here is the p-value. In this case, we have 0.13. So that p-value is too high to be statistically significant, even at the 10% level. So as expected, the result of this ANOVA is that there isn't any difference between the different means. Now, there is an alternative way to carry out an ANOVA in Python using the stats models library. This allows you to specify a model using a formula syntax that's quite similar to what you would expect in the R programming language. So if you're an R user, you might find this method a little bit more familiar. So we'll just show how to do that as well. We're going to import stats models API as SM. And then from statsmodels.formula.api, we're going to import OLS. That is the function that we are going to need to do this. So we're going to call OLS. And then we have a formula that's inside of a string. And this is pretty similar to how you would specify a formula in an R function. So the first part of the formula here is going to be the dependent variable, in this case, the numeric variable that we think might vary based upon the categorical variable. And then we do a tilde here, and that separates the dependent variable from the independent variable. And in this case, we 
called that race. So we'll put that on the other side of the formula. And then the second argument is just the data. So we're going to pass data equals our voter data frame. So then this whole bit of code will initialize a model. So then to actually run our model and get some output, we call sm.stats.anova underscore lm on our model. And by running that, we will get an ANOVA result that we can print out. And we will see a result just like the one we did above. This is just a different way with a different package of doing the same thing. So we'll run this here and we can see, again, we got the same F statistic. This is the P value here. So we got the same P value. And so in this first example, the means of the different groups actually didn't differ. So we got a P value that told us there wasn't any difference, which was right. But it'd be more interesting perhaps to give an example where there is a difference and see if the ANOVA is able to detect that that is statistically significant. So let's run through another example here where we're going to generate new data where there actually is a difference in the data. And then we'll show how that looks in the output. So we're going to generate some new data. It's going to be very similar. We're going to have voter ages again against voter races as the categorical variable. But in this case, we're going to generate the ages for the white group different than we will for all the other groups. We're going to set the average age to 32. And for everyone else, we're going to set the average age to 30. So that isn't a huge difference, but it is a difference. And we'll see whether the ANOVA is able to detect it. We do have a decently large sample size here of 1,000 people. So even though this difference isn't that large, with a larger sample size, we'll be more likely to be able to say that that is significant. So with this new data, we're just going to do the same thing as before. We're going to extract out the various groups, and then we're going to run the same ANOVA test on the groups. And when we run it this time, we see that the F statistic is much larger now, and the P value is statistically significant at even the 1% level. This is an extremely small value because it's to the negative eight power. So the test clearly shows that there is a huge difference between the white group and the other groups in this case. Now in this example, we know that the white group is the one that's different from the others, and that's the reason why we got this statistically significant result. But in a real situation, you might not know which group is the one that is causing a positive result to be thrown. So in that case, you might need to perform what's called a post hoc test, which allows you to go back when there is a significant result and figure out, well, which one of these groups or pairs of groups is causing this significant result. One post hoc test you can do is to just run a separate t-test for every pair of groups. And we could do that using the t-test that we learned about a couple of lessons ago and just running a for loop against all of the pairs of t-test. So I'll show an example of doing that below. I've just written some loops here that will allow us to go through and do a t-test on all the pairs. So this first bit of code, this for loop, you don't have to worry too much about that. All it's doing is gathering up all the different pairs and saving it in this list. And then we have a second for loop that is going to do the actual tests. So for each pair, race one, race two, that are going to be in this race pairs list, we will run a t-test. So the stats.t-test end, and the, the two arguments are the two groups, and we're just going to print the results. So this is going to go through, do a t-test for every pair, and then print the results. So let's run this and see some of this output here. So for instance, for the Asian group and the black group, this is the result. The p-value is pretty high, so it doesn't look like there's anything interesting going on there. And we could go through and look at the p-values for each one of these. No, nothing interesting with that pair, nothing interesting with that pair. Well, now we see this, this one, Asian versus white. Well, the p-value is pretty low on that. So that one looks like it's part of what's flagging this as a significant result. And we could go through here, and here's another one, the black versus white group. This is a very low p-value. And if we were to inspect all these results, we'd notice that any time the white group appears, there tends to be low p-values. So that tells us that it's probably the white group that is most different from the others. <clears throat> one issue here, though, is that we are making multiple comparisons. And the more comparisons like this we make, the more likely we are to find statistically significant results like this just due to chance. Like say we did a thousand t-tests, well, we might expect a few of them to show a 
statistical significance at the 1% level just due to chance because we're making so many comparisons. So when we're doing multiple comparisons like this, it's good to correct for that potential to overestimate significance. And one simple way of correcting for this is simply dividing your significance level that you want by the number of comparisons you're making. So this adjustment for multiple comparisons, where you just divide your significance level by the number of comparisons, is known as the Bonferroni correction. So in this case, even if we do this conservative correction here, we can look above and some of the p-values are still less than this adjustment. So we can pretty, be pretty confident in this case that there is a difference between some of the groups. Now this Bonferroni correction we did here tends to be a pretty conservative approach to adjusting for multiple comparisons that might cause us to end up rejecting some results that are actually different and we wouldn't want to do that. So if we can come up with a different correction that isn't quite as conservative, that could be beneficial to us. So another common post hoc test you can run that's a bit less conservative is called Tukey's test. We're not going to go into all the details of how the Tukey test actually works under the hood, but we'll show how to do it in Python and analyze the resulting output. So we can carry out the Tukey test by loading it in from the statsmodels.stats module. So here we're going to say from statsmodels.stats.multicomp, we're going to import the pairwise Tukey test. It's called pairwise underscore Tukey HSD. And then to run the test, we just call that function and we pass in the data as the first argument, the groups, the categorical variable as the second argument, and alpha is going to be our significance level. So we're generally using 0.5 for that. So this code here is creating the Tukey test, and then we're going to write a little bit more code to show some output. So we're going to show a plot of the resulting test. This is gonna show us confidence intervals for each of the different group means, and we're gonna plot a line that will allow us to see more clearly where the white group is in comparison to the others. We'll also do tukey.summary, which will print out some summary stats of the test itself. So we'll run this and look at the results here. You can see the first part of the tukey test, the summary results are showing us the each of the pairwise groups the average difference between them, and whether we should accept or reject the null hypothesis based on this comparison. So as you can see, for a lot of these groups, all the ones that aren't comparing white to something, the reject says false. So we wouldn't reject the null hypothesis for these because the difference isn't that large. And even for one of the comparisons against the white group, Asian versus white, that says false here because I guess for this one, the difference just happened to not be large enough to say that the result was significant, even though that there, there is a difference there. But then the comparisons for black, white, Hispanic, white, and other white, all of those say true. So for those groups, based on this Tukey test, the difference was large enough that we should reject the null hypothesis, at least at the 5% significance level. And now let's scroll down and look at the plot output. So basically, this is showing us confidence intervals for the mean ages for each group. So for white, the average age was here, and there were more observations for white, so the confidence interval is a bit less wide than some of the other ones. So we can see the other category, Hispanic, Black, and Asian. And note that all four of these categories were actually generated in the exact same way. So even though they were generated the same way, their means differ some because there was randomness involved. And here we see that the confidence intervals for most of the groups don't overlap with the confidence interval for the white group. Here we can see the red bar that we plotted is at the very left side of the white group's confidence interval. So any of the other groups where their confidence interval doesn't overlap with this line, that means they're so far away from the mean of the white group that we are pretty confident that they are different. In the case of the Asian group, there wasn't as many observations there. So the confidence interval on that one is pretty wide and it does actually overlap with the confidence interval for the white group. That's why the test didn't think that we could reject the null hypothesis for this one because the difference wasn't quite large enough for us to say we're, we're sure that these two groups are different. So to summarize what we've done here, we learned about the ANOVA test 
which allows us to check whether a numeric response variable varies according to the levels of some categorical variable. And Python's SciPy library makes it easy to perform an ANOVA test without having to dive too deeply into the mathematical details of the procedure, which would be a bit tricky to carry out manually. Now in the next lesson, we're going to move on from studying statistical inference tests to the final topic of this guide, which is predictive modeling. So we're going to start the first of four lessons on predictive modeling with a lesson on how to perform linear regressions in Python. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.